Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you the Lion's Jaw opening. It's an opening that you play as white against the perk, and it starts with the third move, F3. This is a very uncommon move, and it can lead to some very aggressive and attacking positions early on. We're going to talk about why you might want to play this, what are some of the traps that black has to watch out for, and even if they don't fall for the traps, what are the main ideas behind playing this move so early? All right, guys, so when you play E4 or D4, if you're playing against somebody who likes to play the perk, they're probably going to play d6 and then knight to f6. And you'll probably end up with the same position regardless of if you start with e4 or d4. Okay, you could play d4, they could play d6, and then e4. You're going to get the exact same position. Okay, it doesn't really matter. And the most common move here by far is to play knight to c3 just to defend your pawn. Right, This is a good move, and that's what most people play. And the second move would be bishop to d3. But today we're going to talk about the surprising move f3 which is called the lion's jaw now it's only been played 500,000 times and that might sound like a lot but you have to realize this position right here has been reached in this leeches database almost 15 million times so if you do the math on that 500,000 out of 15 million it's about three percent a little over three percent so it's not played very often usually what happens is people will play the move knight to c3 and then if they want to go into this line, they'll play F3 later, okay? But when we play it super early, it gives us some interesting options. Now, let's talk about why would we want to play a move like F3? Like, aren't we weakening our king? Isn't this like a beginner's rule? Like, don't move your F pawn because it exposes your king? And it is, so we do have to keep an eye on this. But there are some very nice benefits to putting the pawn here. So let's talk about some of those. Let's just say we played knight to C3. And then we played bishop e3 because we want to play queen to d2, create this battery to go after black's bishop, which is actually a really good idea. What could happen here is black might play the move knight to g4, and they're trying to trade off that knight for our bishop. And if they do that, this bishop's going to be unopposed, and we're not going to have a way to really counter it, okay? So this is a big deal. And now we have to move our bishop somewhere. If we move here, they might attack us again. Or if we move here, they might play e5 and attack us again. And you can see how annoying it is. We don't really want to come back to d2 because then we can't make our battery with our queen unless we're going to go over here but that's not as good because we can't castle and you can see how this is just an annoying move right so that's number one uh, reason why going back to the beginning here we might want to put our pawn on f3 we're taking away that option from black right away so now when we play bishop to e3 our bishop is nice and protected from the knight we don't have to worry about that also it's defending our e4 pawn which is under attack and we had to defend it anyway so it kind of you know serves two purposes and a third one is that this sets up for us to be very aggressive with our pawns in the future if black decides to castle here, which, by the way, that's what most perk players are going to do. They're going to castle kingside. So when we play f3, we're setting up g4, h4, h5, right? It's very easy to play g4 now because we've got the support of the pawn. It doesn't matter that black has these pieces here. Okay, so that's the idea. That's why we're playing f3 kind of right away. Now, most players here are going to play the move g6. This is kind of the standard perk setup. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Of course, they can play some other random stuff, but a lot of the time, this is what you're going to see. And what I'm going to recommend that you do is instead of transposing back into the normal lines that they're going to be familiar with, you play bishop to e3, and then you play queen to d2, and you immediately, immediately, as fast as you can, set up this battery and get ready to come down here. Okay, because most people are going to castle, and now we can play the move bishop to h6 and this is a pretty common idea when somebody fianchettos their bishop if you can trade off your bishop for their bishop it leaves the king exposed right so when you're castling usually you don't want to move pawns forward in front of your king because it creates weaknesses in the fianchettoing case though that bishop kind of controls all those dark squares nicely for black right but if we trade those off it's just a lone king it's much easier to attack Okay, so that's what we're doing, and we're not wasting any time. We're doing it right away, okay? Bishop to h6. Now, if black takes us, we're happy. We take with our queen, and look at this. I mean, black has to be very careful. We're going to start throwing our pawns and attacking this guy. h5 is coming next, and, and this is a very nice position, okay? So most people aren't going to take you. They're probably just going to leave it and, and hope that you take them so that they can, you know, recapture with the king. So um, what a lot of people do, and this is actually a good strategy, when somebody's kind of attacking on the king side, the general rule is strike back at the center, okay? And the way that black does that is usually with e5 or c5, okay? c5 is a little bit more popular. So let's look at that one. They play c5, and what they're hoping for is maybe that you take, and it kind of opens things up. Since they're castled, they can start getting their rooks involved and maybe attack your king. 
But I'm going to recommend to you guys a secret move. I say secret. It's, it's just not played very often. But it's very, very tricky. And it's the move, wait for it, H4. Okay, and what we're doing is saying, go ahead, take my pawn. I don't care about the pawn. I'm going for checkmate. All right, so watch this. Most people are going to take, I mean, that's kind of the principal move you should take. Uh, Stockfish agrees. It's a good move. And now we're going to play H5. And what we're trying to do is get ready to open up our rook and use it to attack the king. Okay. Now, a lot of people, when they see this at this point, are going to start to panic a little bit. Okay? If you're playing black in this position, just to give you an idea, I'm going to flip the board here. If you're playing black in this position, this is very scary. Okay. You've got a rook about to come in. You've got the queen and the bishop. This is not a fun position to be in for black. Okay. I'm just pointing that out. So most people kind of panic. I say most people, a lot of people panic. And for example, they will do this. They'll take here, just saying, you know what, I'm going to get rid of that pawn, and it opens up my bishop, and he can't take me because I take him. Why not, right? This is actually a losing move. If you would like to pause, how do we win the game as white? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook takes h5. And the point is that after they take back, queen to g5 threatens checkmate on g7. And not only does it threaten checkmate, the bishop can't move because it's pinned. And the king can't move except to go here. And black has no way to defend the bishop. The only way they don't get checkmated is to move queen to a5 check, which loses the queen for free. They have to sacrifice their queen just to survive a little bit longer. They can take the bishop. The game goes on, but we just won the queen. It's basically over, okay? So this is the first point, right? Like if they don't, you know, if they don't pay attention, there's this queen g5 ig, which by the way, that's not an easy tactic to just see immediately. Like it's kind of a little bit tricky because you have to kind of calculate ahead. So a lot of people will miss that. Now, some people will see that and they'll take this way. But if they do that, well, what do we do now? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, we do the exact same thing. Queen to g5. And look at this. We're threatening checkmate again. Now, this time black does have knight to e8 to defend the bishop. But we still have a fantastic move here. Queen takes h5. And now, instead of targeting g7 for the checkmate, we're targeting h7. We have the rook and the queen lined up. And we're ready to capture here. And so, for example, if black just plays a random move, we're just taking this. And guess what? This is going to be checkmate, right? So that's kind of the idea. Black is all in all kinds of trouble. The best thing that they can do is actually bring the knight back to f6. Then we go back here. They have to go back to e8. And then I think we just take it and play queen to h6. And black is black is in a, in a mess, right? They can't defend this pawn. They have to go f6 and try to, like, run away. But we, let's see, I'm, I'm using stockfish here. Bishop c4. And then I guess we take this. I mean, black's position is falling apart. Okay, they're falling apart. And at this point, you can probably just develop your knights and castle and, and black is in big trouble. Okay, so you can see how when we play h4, h5 really early, this is very troublesome for black. Another point that I want to point out, if we go back to the beginning here, when we played bishop to h6, if you start with h4, a lot of people as black will play the move h5. They say, nope, nope, I know what you're going to do. I'm not going to have any of that. And they stop your pawn right away. This is actually pretty annoying because you could try to play g4 and just bust everything open, but they can take you and now the knight and the bishop get involved and our king actually gets a little bit exposed. It's better for black, right? So when we, going back to the main line here, when we play bishop h6, not only are we going for the trade, we're also blockading this pawn, right? And we've got this guy now that they can't stop, okay? So that's kind of another, another point here. So let's go back to the main line, c5, h4 h5 and now let's say okay nelson but what if they you know don't fall for this trap what if they don't fall for our trick okay uh, the best move is knight to c6 okay and if they play knight to c6 what i recommend that you do is actually trade here and they have another decision another pitfall that black can fall into if they take with the h pawn they lose if you'd like to pause how do we win the game now if you had a chance to look at that we simply take the queen comes in and then this is checkmate because we've got the rook here. You can see how powerful this is. When we get that rook involved and the queen can come in, black has to be extremely careful, all right? So they have to, when we take, they have to take with the f pawn because now uh, if we do this, it's no longer checkmate, right? Because we can't go there because the pawn. But what you can do in this case is actually just play bishop to c4 check. They're going to block. And I really like this because it makes their bishop really bad. And now we can take, bring the queen in, and when they go back, um, I, I just like the plan to bring your knights out. Just 
play knight e2, knight d2. You're going to castle queenside, then you're going to bring that rook over. Of course, you have to kind of react to what black is going to do, right? So it gets a little bit tricky, but that's one plan, just bringing your knights and castling. Another thing that you can do is play g4 with potentially the idea of playing g5. Now, there's one move that I do want to show you here that you have to watch out for. Knight to h5 is actually a strong move for black. And yes, we could sacrifice our rook, but it turns out that we're kind of running out of pieces in this scenario. And so you don't want to go for that right away, but you can kind of set this up. And maybe once you get your knight in position, so for example, knight here, knight to g3, and now maybe g5 is a good idea. Because now if they go here, you take with the knight and you keep your, you know, your powerful queen and, and rook battery. So just keep that in mind. I'm just kind of giving you guys ideas, right, of what you can do. That's if you want to be very aggressive, that's what I would do, something like that. If you want to just kind of play a little bit slower, you would go with the other plan, bring the knights and castle, okay? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's a really simple idea. Most people who play the perk are going to go down something similar, okay? Now, of course, there are other ways that they can play. They don't have to. But as soon as you see that fianchetto happening, um, I recommend you just go for it right away, okay? So you play f3, and then boom, you see that? Bishop e3, queen d2, and you just go there right away. Now, what if they don't castle? What if they, you know, let's see, what's the most popular move besides castling? Wow, castling is by far the most popular move, but the next one would be c6. If they play c6, I actually want to point out something here that's pretty tricky. If you just go at bishop h6 and they haven't castled, and they've played c6, watch what happens. They're going to take you, and then they're going to play queen b6, and it's a double attack, and you're actually in trouble. You actually, uh, your queen's over here not really doing anything, and you're going to lose a pawn, and now you're you going to have to try to hold on. So that's a little trap you don't want to fall into, okay? So if they do play c6, you need to just play knight to c3, and then, of course, if they castle, that's when you can kind of continue with your plan, bring the bishop down there, and the game goes on. And if they don't castle, and they're just, you know, I don't know, let's see, what's the next common move? b5. Um, you're kind of just playing chess, and I wouldn't say that you should continue down that path you do have to react a little bit to what black is going to do. Okay, so this isn't going to be like a guaranteed win every time you play, but be encouraged by the fact that most people who play the perk, they don't really like to think too much in the opening. They just want to play something and get on with the game, and that's why so many people here will just castle, because this is what they've been programmed to do. Uh, not programmed, they're not robots, but like this is what people have practiced doing over and over, and so it's just kind of a habit, right, of like, yep, I'm just going to castle. So... Uh, bring the bishop, push the h pawn, look for those traps with the queen g5, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun playing this this lion's claw attack. Sorry, lion's jaw uh, attack. Did I say lion's claw earlier? Anyway, it's called the lion's jaw, if I said it wrong. Sorry. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.